The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw a man casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not forbid him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon after to speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is for us. For truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose his reward. And whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the sea. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off, for it is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, How will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated. Let's pray. Lord, you have called upon us to follow you in all places, in all times, in all circumstances. Help us to do this. For we live in a world filled with distractions, things that demand our time and our attention, things that knowingly or unknowingly would have us worship them over you, to dedicate our lives to them over you. Help us, Lord, to recognize those places, those circumstances, those times when something else is seeking to replace you. Teach us to be faithful in all that we say and do, so we draw closer and closer to you, serving you here in the world and living the good news. Now gather us around your word. Help us to hear it, and in hearing it, help us to live. We ask and pray all these things in your name. Amen. Friends, grace and peace today from God our Father through our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The probe was on its way to Mars. It had been launched in 1998 and it spent several months traversing the distance from the Earth to the Red Planet. And literally years had gone into planning the probe, designing its hardware crafting it carefully, writing the software that would run the computers that would guide the probe and allow it to do its mission once it arrived on Mars. It was intended to monitor the weather and the climate of the red planet to determine how much oxygen maybe was in the air and vital things like that. It was a very ambitious project. And all had gone flawlessly. It performed beautifully all the way. And now came the last day for the probe to make its descent to the surface of Mars. And as the scientists were watching the telemetry coming to them from this probe, as it began its descent, everything looked good, looked great. It was going to be a textbook landing on the surface of Mars until something started to go wrong. They were beginning to get error messages and critical heat messages. The probe was overheating, heating far too fast and far too much until finally it became obvious that it had burned up even in the thin Martian atmosphere and failed utterly. Weeks and months were spent trying to figure out what happened. It all worked so hard. They designed it perfectly. They wrote the software. They checked it over and over again for errors, and everything was as it should be. It shouldn't have burned up in the atmosphere and crashed on the surface of the planet. 
until one day a programmer noticed in the software where the computer was told to begin the descent that the rate of descent was measured in feet and it was supposed to be measured in meters which meant that the probe was going to descend far too fast and all of those thousands of hours of work and energy that had gone into making that mission possible and ensuring its success was undone by somebody who inadvertently wrote down so many feet as opposed to so many meters. And though its destination was in front of it, the path and the instructions that had been given destroyed it. Some time back, Pope Francis was supposed to have said that all religions lead to God. I did some investigating in that this past week, and it's not entirely clear what Francis was trying to say. That's not unusual for Pope Francis. I suspect there are two or three priests whose sole job is to explain what Pope Francis just said. But there is that common thinking among people that all religions in one way or another are headed in the same direction, are going toward God. And there's a bit of truth in that because we are all wired to worship. We are. We cannot help ourselves. We will worship something. Even an atheist worships something. Something greater than themselves. And so in that sense, in that basic truth, yes, all of us are headed towards the divine. But what kind of instructions what kind of guidance are we getting as we move towards the divine? If it's just some amorphous divine being out there somewhere in the ether, that's not the God who brings salvation or the God who gives us hope. If it's some spiritual practice that may give you peace of heart and mind and soul, that's certainly good for your life here on earth. But nobody lives forever, and we all come to that hour in which our lives are at over, and the spiritual practices that gave us peace of heart and mind and soul in this life are of no avail. Or if someone is talking about following Jesus, but it's following Jesus in some strange and bizarre way that was never intended, we may have the right language, but it doesn't get us to the heart of the Savior. Jesus' disciples saw a man who was casting out demons in Jesus' name, and they wanted to stop him because he wasn't one of us. That's been one of the problems of the church since the very beginning, and I'll get to that later. But the disciples wanted to have a monopoly on following Jesus, and Jesus says, no, don't stop him. For anybody who does a mighty work in my name will not be able to speak ill of us soon after. And therein lies the key. In his name. There is a God. Most of the planet will acknowledge that there is some kind of divine out there. We Christians confess that this is the God of creation the God who called all things into being, the God who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is in his name that we have salvation. That is what we confess. But for someone to take the name of Jesus and use the cloak of religion and guide people some other direction than to God the Father, to the heart and the depth of the love that is the Holy Trinity, is to lead them into destruction. You may be pointing them in the right direction, but it's off just enough that they miss out on God because they followed something that was not true, that was not of the faith, that was not intended to give and create and nurture the hope that lies within us. And that's one of the reasons we are so particular and careful about our theology. Not so we can find ways to exclude people from Christianity, 
but so that we don't wind up giving them the wrong information, telling them something that should be in meters and we give it to them in feet, so they crash and burn, thinking they've gotten closer to Jesus when we pointed him away from the Savior. And that's one of the challenges the church continues to face. Because we live in a world that is demanding that we pay attention to it. And that we yield to it. And we give ourselves over to the wisdom of the world. And now we say to ourselves, whether we say it out loud or we say it unconsciously, that if God knew what we knew, he would be doing things this way. Of course, that's been the problem with humanity from the very beginning. From the moment Eve reached out for the fruit that we know better than God. But we forget whose name we are living under, whose name we are working in, whose name is our witness and our life. If we are giving out faith that we have modified or created or changed in our own minds because it fits our particular notion of what God ought to be doing, we may be pointing people in the general direction of Jesus, but we're not pointing them to Jesus. We're wanting them to follow us or what we think God ought to be doing. And it's clear, no one can do a work in my name And that's the heart of the matter. Everything we are to be about is to be about in the name of Jesus. To live under the reality of his life, death, and resurrection. So that we give faithful witness to what has gone before us. To what Jesus handed to his disciples on the mountain of the ascension. When he's given us the authority to proclaim the good news and to baptize and to teach not what we think God ought to be doing or what we'd like God to do, but what God has done in Jesus Christ and is continuing to do. I think every human being, in one way or another, is seeking the divine, whether they realize it or not. Even if they reject the idea of a divine being, they are seeking something outside of themselves. And we have the one who is born of the Father, come to us, born of Mary, suffers and dies for us, and by his rising from the dead, not only joins us to his death and resurrection, but leads us and guides us in our lives as we move toward God and the coming kingdom. That is our witness. He is the one, and following him by his own words, is the way to God the Father. And there is no other way. As much as the world would like to say that there are many paths, there is only one way to God the Father, and that is through Jesus Christ, crucified and risen from the dead. And we cannot, and we must not, as the church, forget or compromise that message. For if we do, we're no longer the church. We're just a gathering of like-minded people. And without Jesus Christ, we have no purpose or meaning. So let us continue to live in the name. Let us continue to preach in the name. Let us continue to act in the name. Let us continue to live each and every hour of our lives in, with, and for Jesus. So the world sees our witness and is kept on the right path to the Father. Amen.